From the launch pad at Randolph, the Bethlehem Academy Cardinals will face the Rockets tonight. Welcome to Friday Night Hoops on the mighty 920 KBHL and 97.9 FM. Physical is what the game was the first time through with the Cardinals prevailing 68, or rather the Rockets prevailing 68-62. And both of the coaches said physical is how it's going to be tonight as well between the two teams. And frankly, the JV game looked pretty physical at times also. Junior varsity game going to Randolph 51 to 37. Now, in previous seasons, this game tonight would have uh, section implications for both teams in 1A because that's where they were both at. Well, nowadays, Randolph is in 1AA. In a few minutes, we'll hear from Coach Quaid on uh, some aspects of that and how that makes things different. Um, they do need to kind of build a different schedule, and some pieces fell into place to play more AA teams this season as it is. But he says it's a good fit for the team. Tonight is also senior night. Even foremost on everyone's mind here at Randolph is the senior night opportunity to recognize Colton Adi, Caleb Staub, who is the manager of the team, Jeffrey Krieger, James Sheldon, and Peyton Barker. And they'll do some senior night activities just before the uh, introduction of the lineups in this game this evening. Uh, tonight's game is being brought to you by First United Bank of Faribault, uh, as well as Amesbury Truth, Faribault Foods, Federated Mutual Insurance, and h and Block, Owatonna, Lakeville, and Faribault. Bethlehem Academy, 6-16 six and 16 on the season, but they've been picking up some wins lately. Bethlehem Academy, in fact, has won five of their six games over the last nine games. Five and two was a stretch from January 19th to February 8th. Then they ran into the buzzsaw that is Blooming Prairie back on the 9th. And this past Monday lost to Hope Academy. But still, five out of their six wins have come in very recent times the last couple of weeks for the B.A. Cardinals. Meanwhile, for Randolph, the wins have been kind of hard to come by uh, in the last little while. They come into today's game with a record of 8-16 and 16 on the season. They did have a 4-2 and two stretch in early January. But since January 18th, they have won just two games. So they are looking to find themselves a little bit before going into that one double-A section playoff. Uh, Randolph has one more game left after today. They'll play a Triton next Friday night, while Bethlehem Academy still has three games on their schedule for next week with a Monday, Tuesday, Friday schedule, home with St. Charles at West Lutheran, and then home with Hayfield on Friday the 23rd. So again, the records. Bethlehem Academy, 6-16 six and 16 overall, 3-10 and 10 in the Gopher. And Randolph is 8-16 and 16 on the season, 5-8 and eight in the Gopher Conference. Both of these teams on the east side of the uh, Gopher Conference standings where Blooming Prairie has uh, not run away with it despite their incredible record. They have just a two-game lead over Kenyon Wanamingo. Blooming Prairie leads the conference, however, while on the west side of the conference, JWP has a three-game lead over Waterville Elysian Morristown going down to these final games of the regular season. We'll pause for a quick uh, break here on the Mighty 920 KDHL, Faribault, Minnesota. Roy Koenig with you from Randolph Schools for tonight's boys' basketball encounter with the BA Cardinals and Randolph Rockets. Every part counts at Amesbury Truth. And the most important one is the part you'll play when you join their team. As the leading provider of window and door products in North America, Amesbury Truth has a part for you. Right now, they're hiring. And those positions come with competitive wages, benefits, and plenty of opportunities, too. So you never stop growing. Isn't it time you open the door to a career at Amesbury Truth? Get details and apply online at amesburytruth.com slash careers. H&R Block offices in Oatana, Faribault, and Lakeville remind you now is the time to get your paperwork in order for tax season. Book your appointment at one of the offices where in-person or drop-off filing is available. No computer program can ask every single possible tax question. The tax professionals in Lakeville, Faribault, and Oatana average 10 years experience, and you can request the same preparer every year. File your way at H&R Block offices in Faribault, Oatana, and Lakeville. All tax situations are different. Not everyone gets a refund. Federated Mutual Insurance Company is passionate about the care and enrichment of the next generation. 
At the heart of our charitable focus is youth mentoring and our support of Big Brothers Big Sisters. We are proud of our employees who are currently volunteering to be a big brother, big sister, big couple, or big family. And yet there are hundreds of children still waiting for a big. Ignite your year. Empower potential today. Consider this your personal invitation to learn more about Big Brothers Big Sisters. Together, we can make a difference. Keep your eyes on KDHLradio.com for upcoming sports broadcasts. And for that matter, you can check out the new Minnesota High School Sports Scoreboard a click away on the website. Uh, you can easily check Minnesota sports scores listed by school or sport or conference, what have you. And download the free app to check Minnesota high school sports scores on the go on the KDHL app. Coming up tomorrow, it's Carleton Basketball as they host St. Mary's. The Knights have qualified for the postseason, but seedings are yet to be determined. So that'll be tomorrow afternoon with a game from the West Gym at Carleton College. Uh, on the schedule for next week, there's Northfield Boys Basketball next Friday night as they will host Owatonna. And that'll be on AM 1390 KRFO. There's also boys basketball tonight on KRFO. The Owatonna boys are hosting Rochester John Marshall in a big section game. The Huskies boys will host Albert Lee next Tuesday. And uh, as I said, keep an eye on kdhlradio.com for upcoming schedule announcements and which events will be on the radio and then down the road just a little bit for that Minnesota State High School boys basketball tournament. So the Gopher Conference standings on the east side from the Minnesota scores.net website Blooming Prairie 12 and 1 in the conference 10 and 3 Kenyon Wanamingo two games behind the Knights are actually one of the teams that handed Blooming Prairie a loss Triton is in third place at 6 and 7 Randolph at 5 and 8 Bethlehem Academy at 3 and 10 and Hayfield just 1 and 12 on the season a rare down year for the Vikings on the west side, Janesville Waldorf Pemberton has been having a great season, 11 and 1 in the conference. It looks like it'll be uh, JWP and BP for the Gopher Conference championship game. Waterville Elysian Morristown is three games behind JWP at 8 and 4. Maple River 8 and 5. United South Central is 7 and 6. Medford is playing a limited schedule. They don't really have a conference record necessarily, even though they've played some conference teams. And by the way, Medford, I believe, will not be participating in the section tournament just the numbers are real tough for the medford tigers and so they're just kind of taking a uh, take your breath year i guess you could say new richland heartland ellendale geneva has struggled through the season although they see improvements coming and are building toward the future uh, winless in conference games in the action that is going on today involving some section and or conference teams Martin County West is at Spring Grove. Spring Grove, one of the top teams in Section 1A, although they did lose to Blooming Prairie. Lewiston Altura is at Wabasha Kellogg. Schaefer Academy at Goodhue. Triton at Kenyon Ronomingo today. Fillmore Central at Winona Cotter. Kingsland at Hayfield. Casson Manorville at Zimbrota Mazeppa. And the game of the night in 1AA is Lake City at Cannon Falls, and both of those teams are rated. Let me find them. Uh, Lake City is number three. Cannon Falls is number eight. The top two seeds in one double A, so that is a big game. Randolph has been playing in one A for a long time, and now they're playing in one double A. The conversation with the coach a few minutes ago gets into a couple of different aspects of things regarding the Rockets. Coach Quaid. Uh, well, Coach, it's senior night for you guys. Nice opportunity. What can you say about the senior group? Yeah, yeah. The, the senior group, uh, I actually was lucky enough to have the opportunity to coach these guys as seventh graders. So um, kind of interesting to see that introduction to, like, full-time organized basketball, you know, at the beginning of the junior high program mm -hmm. when I kind of um, went away and coached some college basketball for a while and came back, and now to kind of run it with them this senior year has been um, has been kind of a – an interesting moment to be able to kind of take that journey full circle. How has the season been going lately? How you guys been playing? Um, not playing as good as we'd like. Um, a lot of inexperience. Um, even our even our upperclassmen just don't have a ton of minutes in their career on the court. Um, but they're learning quickly. You know, we've seen a lot of growth and different things here recently in the last couple of games that we're excited to continue to um, continue to build on and continue to grow with going into you know section play here towards the end of the. End of the month. 
Bethlehem Academy, before I ask you about section, Bethlehem Academy, uh, your thoughts? What happened first time? Yeah, first time we beat them by six at their place. Uh, it was a tough kind of back and forth game. Um, two physical teams um, had, had an interesting kind of rhythm to that game. Our guys were able to kind of overcome um, overcome the, the intensity and the, the physicality of the game to, um, to prevail in that one. Uh, should be a good matchup here tonight on senior night. And first year in one double A, is that right? The move to double A's first season. What do you think of that? And uh, what are you guys getting into? Hi. Uh, it's a it's a good move for us. Excited to kind of be be challenged with different um, double A opponents and um, and different things. You know, kind of with that comes the turnover of schedule and kind of all those things associated with QRF and you know how you get ranked in the section. You know, all that kind of turns when you um, when you become kind of a double A team as opposed to being a single A team. So those changes have been have been interesting. They've been ongoing. And uh, we're excited to kind of continue the journey of kind of introduction and um, being a double-A team here forward. All right, thank you for your time and good luck. Appreciate it. Thank you. We are all familiar with these kinds of banks. The ever-popular snow bank that either your neighbor has backed into or their neighbor kids sliding on with their friends. Then there's the blood bank, which, by the way, always a good idea to give blood. But are you familiar with First United Bank with locations in Faribault and Owatonna? At First United Bank, banking is all about relationships and working towards a common goal of financial security. Get to know the most popular bank in the area, First United Bank, member FDIC. Every part counts at Amesbury Truth. And the most important one is the part you'll play when you join their team. As the leading provider of window and door products in North America, Amesbury Truth has a part for you. Right now, they're hiring. And those positions come with competitive wages, benefits, and plenty of opportunities, too. So you never stop growing. Isn't it time you open the door to a career at Amesbury Truth? Get details and apply online at amesburytruth.com slash careers. So it is senior night here at Randolph. And they're going to, um, they are saluting the seniors. You have Colton Adi, who participates in football, baseball, and basketball. Favorite basketball memory is spending time with his friends. And he looks to be an airplane mechanic after high school. Peyton Parker who is in basketball and football for his extracurriculars. And his favorite basketball memory is the first time dunking a basketball. And he'll be going to the DCTC electrical program, Peyton Barker. Jeffrey Krieger, involved in baseball, basketball, football, band, and Boy Scouts. Favorite memory is going to play basketball on the weekends with his friends. And he looks to go to college for environmental studies. And the fourth player, that's a senior, James Sheldon, basketball and Boy Scouts. He says being part of the team and the bus rides home are among his best basketball memories. Also looking to get into an electrical program. A couple of the guys looking to do that. Colton, a couple of years on the varsity and nine years playing basketball. Peyton, one year on the varsity, five years playing basketball. Jeffrey, two years on the varsity, nine years of basketball. And James, two years on the varsity, nine years of basketball. And then there's Cale Staub, who is the manager for the basketball team. He also does baseball and trap shooting. A favorite memory for him is riding home on buses, uh, on the bus after games and enjoying the time with his buddies also looking to get into an electrician program after high school. He and he's been uh, in basketball for seven years. So the five seniors on senior night here at Randolph. The Rockets are playing their final home game of the regular season. And they are a little ways down in the section. So they are going to be on the road for the playoffs. Their final game of the regular season comes next week at Triton. So a senior night observance taking place here at Randolph. Bethlehem Academy, meanwhile, does have a couple more home games on Monday. St. Charles comes in on Tuesday at West Lutheran. 
And next Friday, the 23rd, they will host Hayfield to wrap up on their regular season. Good photo opportunity there for the five seniors. And now we'll move along to the introductions and then get to tonight's game here at Randolph. Roy with you on the Mighty 920 KDHL Faribault for tonight's basketball action. Starters for Bethlehem Academy, a six foot four senior forward number one, Aaron Huerta. A six foot four senior and guard number three, Hudson Dillon. A six foot freshman guard number four, Hayden Dillon. Six foot senior forward number five, Willie Porter. And a six foot freshman guard number 22, Owen Dotterwich. The head coach is Ed Friesen. Assistant coaches are Jason Longevin and Taylor Kaiser. Jason Longevin is taking over. Ed under the weather, as I understand it. And Jason Longevin is uh, the acting head coach today for Bethlehem Academy. For the Randolph Rockets, starters include a six foot senior number two, Peyton Barker. A six foot two senior number 24, Colt Noddy. A six foot five senior number 25, James Sheldon. And a six foot two senior, number 30, Jeffrey Krieger. Yes, all four starters in the lineup, of course, for head coach Cam Quaid. And also starting is a six foot one sophomore, number three, Colton Ford. Assistant coaches for the Rockets include Corey Lorenzen, Austin Morehouse, Isaac Illa, and Zach Burke. Randolph is in blue with orange numbers, and the Bethlehem Academy Cardinals are in white. Red numbers trimmed in black, a blue stripe up the side of the uniform as well as the side of the shorts. And Randolph will be going from left to right in this first half. Bethlehem Academy from right to left. We're ready to go, more or less right on time for high school basketball on a Friday night. From Randolph, the launch pad, as it indicates on the wall for the Rockets. BA 6 and 16, Randolph 8 and 16. Randolph won by 6 earlier this season. Last season, BA took both games, both were tight games. Right away Bethlehem Academy's Dillon takes it to the hoop, missed it, rebounded by Barker off the uh, miss. Good penetration, but it just didn't fall in. Barker gets it handed back to him. They work it on the left wing side, Sheldon. Sheldon gives that ball to uh, Barker, drives in left corner, now top forward corner, baseline drive and I think he stepped out of bounds, so that'll be a turnover on Randolph. Dillon gives the ball to Dillon, Hayden gives to Hudson, so Hudson is on the dribble right now in the front court, hands it off to Dotterwich, who is coming by. Right wing side outside the arc. In on the right is Horta, and he will rainbow a three on in, and Bethlehem Academy scores first. In this opening minute. Okay, that was a two. That was just a two. Thought it looked like he was far enough in the corner for a three. Here's a turnover, and Bethlehem Academy on the runner to the lane, and up and in for Hudson Dillon, and 4-0. 4-0. Barker skips it forward for Sheldon. They work the ball to Ford. He's got a long three he attempts. It's off to the side. Ball rolls out of bounds. Last touch by B.A. So Randolph will keep possession of the ball. The ball never hit the rim, and the shot clock will go to 19. That's where it's at. No reset on that. But lots of time with 18 to shoot. Just to the left of the lane was Adi. A pump, fake, drive. Fade away, draws a foul. Going to the free throw line is Barker. Barker will go to the free throw line for two shots. Foul is on Bethlehem Academy's Huerta. His first team's first. And Barker to the free throw line. First shot comes off the front of the rim. couple of deep breaths for the senior Peyton Barker feet spread wide apart on that free throw line hits the second free throw makes it four to one EA with the lead and the ball a minute and a half in Hudson Dillon hands that off to Dotterwich 
Man for man defense by Randolph. In the corner is Huerta. Goes baseline. Shoots, misses, but got fouled. So Huerta will go to the stripe. And the foul was on 24. Adi, his first, team's first. So both coaches indicated before the game, expecting a physical game already. We've got two free throws for each side. As worked as shot is too strong, comes off the back of the rim. One more shot coming. He really stands at an angle to the free throw line, and he hits the second shot, 5-1 to one Bethlehem Academy, compared to Barker, who has really squared up, flush straight onto the hoop from his uh, free throw shooting position. Ford gives right side Adi. They look inside the lane to Krieger. Back out to Adi. Zone defense by Bethlehem Academy. Ball handed off to Sheldon. Sheldon on the dribble, a drive, a heave to the far corner. Nobody home. And Randolph, some turnovers here early on. And VA up 5-1, to one, couple of minutes in. And Dotterwich, the freshman guard, will take the ball forward. He takes the inbound pass and gives the ball to Hudson Dillon. Dillon dribbles, fires it over to Porter. Porter free throw line, hands it off to Huerta from just inside the arc. Is a long two. He's got five. And it's 7-1, Bethlehem Academy. As Randolph is getting ready to send some other players in. Different lineup today here, going with the all-senior lineup. There are three players getting ready to come in for the Rockets as a fourth turnover by Randolph. A lot of contact at the other end. The shot misses. There's no foul. There's no charge. No foul. Nothing. Just a missed shot. Ball goes out of bounds off of Randolph, so it stays Bethlehem Academy basketball on that missed shot by uh, Willie Porter at the end of a fast break. Into the game now is Hunter Kriesel. Also entering the game is number 11, Jamison Exley. And finally, I think Lorenzen is the other new player. Shot misses, rebound Kriesel. And Randolph with the basketball down 7-1. to one. And the shot is good for Lorenzen. It is now 7-3. to three. Dotterwich takes the long shot. That misses, rebounded by Kriesel. Now the scoreboard says, oh, now they're fixing it. They gave the points to Bethlehem Academy on the last play. Good job getting it in the lane, but the shot misses right inside for Randolph. Rebound taken down by uh, Hayden Dillon. 7-3, 14 and a half to go in the first half. A step back three, floating a little bit as he's shooting and hitting it is Hudson Dillon. He's got the first three of the game. It's 10-3, Bethlehem Academy. Stats in tonight's game as a leaner doesn't go, and there's an offensive foul. Offensive foul on Colton Ford. Stats of the game brought to you by h and Block, Faribault, Owatonna, and Lakeville. They know their numbers at h and R Block. So the foul on Colton Ford, his first team's second, and B.A. up Nine to three. Nine to three. I said ten to three a minute ago. It's nine to three. The last shot was a two by Horta. Nine to three. A really long three comes off the front of the rim. Rebounded by Ford. A quick outlet ahead. Randolph hurries into the front court. They didn't get a fast break chance, but they do set up their offense. Pass along the baseline, then flying out of bounds. His toss is intercepted. A lot of turnovers here early for Randolph. Ten three. Bethlehem Academy on the run. Hudson Dillon into the front court. Goes into the corner to Dotterwich, and he'll hand it back off to Hudson, who takes a long three again. This one comes off the rim and is rebounded by Adi. Now a three on its way for Ford. Knocks it down, Colton Ford, with the first three of the game for Randolph. And now it is, well, now, now they put boy, the scoreboard, people. Now it's 10 to 6. So it was 10 before. Now it's 10 to 6. So it was 10 to 3 previously, and now it's 10 to 6. There's a drive and drawing a foul. No, a tie up, a tie up. Porter. Porter took it hard up the lane. Tie up belongs to uh, Randolph on the alternating possession. All right, so 10 to 6 because you have the three pointer. It was the three pointer by Dillon, was the final made shot because he had a two and a two and then the free throw. 
the field goal by Horta and then the three-pointer by Dillon. So that's where it got to 10 to 3 and then the three-pointer by Ford and that made it 10 to 6. So that's where we're at. Little bumpy start here scoreboard wise and myself on the score sheet as well. Audie hands that off to Kreisel. Kreisel gives to Ford, drives and shoots and scores. Baseline left. That'll be Colton Ford. So he's picked up five quick points and all of a sudden it is a two-point game at 10 to 8. Just under 13 minutes to go in the first half. We will review stats and section standings and some sports news in general coming up at the half here from Randolph, the launch pad. Horta just inside the three-point arc, missed it, and rebounded by Exley. VA has been a lot of one and done here, getting out rebounded pretty heavily by Randolph, even though they do lead the game 10-8. to You've got the heavy rebound advantage on one side and a big turnover number on Randolph that's hurting them. So each of these teams has an area where they are dominating, and the other team thus being dominated. All in all, it adds up to a tight game at 10-8. to Randolph dribbling through the circle as Adi gives up all to Lorenzen in traffic, puts it up. It's off an offensive rebound by Adi. And then the ball is thrown away. Well, I don't know if it's accurate or not to write down to the number, but I've had seven turnovers on Randolph already. At the same time, two, four, five, six, about seven rebounds to only about one or two for Bethlehem Academy. Ten to eight, BA with the lead, 12, 15 to go in the first half. Bethlehem Academy inbound by Hayden Dillon, and he gives the ball to Hudson. Hudson flips it over to Dotterwich, well outside the arc. Now Huerta has it, straddling the three-point line. Backs his way in, up the lane he goes, fakes once, shoots the second time, missed it. Rebound, Exley. Bethlehem Academy getting off quite a few shots, and now Randolph finds a man all alone, J.D. Kuhn. New into the game and all alone underneath the hoop. This is a 7-0 run for Randolph, and we are where we expected to be in a tight game, 10-10, 11-40 to go in the first half. Where it fakes a shot, now takes a little bit of an off-balance runner, missed it, again, one and done, and the rebound came to Kuhn that time. Randolph a chance to uh, take their first lead of the game, fade away, baseline shot off the heel of the rim, rebounded by Horta, that shot missed by Kuhn. Hudson Dillon into the front court. Left to right, uh, right to left hand dribble, pulls up on the dribble, gives Dotterwich. 10 10 tie, Dotterwich pushed that one up, didn't have enough on it, so he missed shot, but a rebound by Porter. Down to 13 on the shot clock, and the ball stolen away. Randolph, not really a fast break necessarily. They hurry into the front court, get things set up. Three point try by Ford, and knocks down his second three of the game. And this is now a 10-0 run for Randolph. They lead 13-10. Rockets up on the Cardinals, 10-40 to go in the first half. Into the corner for Porter. Finds a little opening in the defense. And then his shot is defensed well and rebounded by Lorenzen. So with a three-point lead and the ball, Randolph goes to work on offense. Low post to give and go back. An off-balance shot goes up and off. Player goes falling out of bounds. Back on his feet, rushing back into the play is Exley, who missed the shot in traffic and then uh, ended up falling onto the floor. Huerta up the lane. Great feed from Hudson Dillon. And Huerta has seven points. It's a 13-12 game. Randolph. Exley passes to Ford. Ford for a three. He's had a couple of those. Missed it. The ball is tapped out to Exley. Three from the left side. Misses by Lorenzen. And now Bethlehem Academy with a couple of subs into the game. Friesen will enter for B.A. As does Lanners. Zach Lanners, a 6'3 junior. Friesen, Matt Friesen, a 6'2 senior. And also back into the game is Peyton Barker for Randolph after he took a breather. 13-12 Rockets with the lead. Horta has the ball top of the key. Fakes a shot. Passes left side for Hudson Dillon. Dillon left hand dribble then pulls up. Floater good for Hudson. He's got eight points and it is 14-13. We go back and forth. A couple of lead changes here lately. 
Creasel passes, forward corner, Lorenzen looks inside, great pass, shot up too strong, weak side rebound for Lanners off the miss. They found Kuhn in great position, great pass to him, but he then just missed the bunny, and 14-13 BA with the ball, 9-15 to go in the first half. Puerto looks left of the key, fakes, drives, and sets it up and off. The tap out is still alive, and last touched by Bethlehem Academy, so BA We'll call that a missed shot. One, two, three, four, five, six. Bethlehem Academy, six for 18 shooting right now. Six for 18 and five for 13 for Randolph. Unofficial numbers, but that's close. 14-13 BA, stats a service of H&R Block, Fairbow, Owatonna, Lakeville. You don't want just anyone doing your taxes. You want H&R Block handling that. Get a hold of them. Tax time is approaching. Foul is on. Friesen. His first, team second. Still 23 seconds on the shot clock, so that stays where it was for Randolph. A really long three for Ford. It counts. It only counts for three, but it was a long one. He's got three threes, and we have another lead change. 16 14, Randolph. After B.A. jumped out to a big lead, Randolph has come storming back. Kreisel missed the shot, and uh, Kreisel got the rebound, I should say, on a missed shot. There's a three from the left side by Ford yet again. Colton Ford with four threes. It is now 19-14, Randolph, 8-15 to go in the first half. And fouled as he's flinging a shot up in the lane is Hudson Dillon. So Dillon will go to the free throw line. Foul is on Barker. His first. Team's third. 19-14. Rockets in front. At one point the score was 10-3 Bethlehem Academy. Line drive. That was an absolute line drive of a free throw attempt, but it went in. There was no arc on it at all. Uh, Hayden Dillon back into the game, Porter back into the game, and Kyle Ford is now into the game for Randolph. Randolph in blue, Bethlehem Academy in a white uniform, second meeting of the season. And that free throw misses, and Horta fights for the rebound and gets it, offensive rebound. Back to Horta from Hudson Dillon. And they work the ball around the perimeter, do the Cardinals. Hayden Dillon has it. It's stolen. And a fast break the other way. Block. A block on a shot. The block was by Hudson Dillon. Transition the other way. They throw the ball out of bounds and turn it over. So the turnover numbers are starting to come a little bit more even in the game. Rebounding numbers are still in favor of Randolph. And a tight game, 19-15. With the one free throw made in that trip for Hudson Dillon. Two for four on free throws for B.A., one for two for Randolph. Rockets with the ball, attacking the basket to my right. Kuhn gives to Ford. Now, in this case, that would be Colton Ford. There are two Fords on the floor, penetrating the defense, drawing the foul is Hunter Kreisel. And Kreisel will go to the line for two. The foul on Bethlehem Academy is charged on Zach Lanners. His first, team's third, and two free throws here for Hunter Kreisel. No points in the game for him yet. Right-handed shot, good. So 20 to 15, Randolph. 7.36 to go, first half. And the junior misses, and the rebound is Hudson Dillon. So 20 to 15, Randolph, BA with the ball, going over that large R at midcourt. A couple of Rockets are uh, graphics on this court as well here at Randolph. Hold of the Rockets. Huerta flings it over to Porter. Porter drives, bumps, has the ball jarred free, goes to pick it up again. A pass is deflected, but Hayden Dillon does get to the ball he gives to Hudson. Hudson Dillon, right to left-hand dribble, drives in, floater up and off, follows it through, and the fight for the rebound is rolling out of bounds. Who was last to touch it? It's white ball, so last to touch it was Randolph. And with a 20-15 to deficit, Bethlehem Academy is sending in a new player as Dotterwich checks back into the game. 
So Dodderwich, Dillon, Dillon, Huerta, and I believe Porter round out the crew for acting coach Longevin. Ball is handed to Dillon from Dillon. Uh, Hudson has the ball right now. Hudson, lots of time, 15 on the shot clock. Lost the handle on the dribble. Dives after the basketball. Picks it up from the floor. Tass, tosses it. Taps it. Stolen away. Fifth turnover on Bethlehem Academy. Long pass ahead goes to Colton Ford. Now coming out of the corner is Kyle Ford. Passes to the left corner. Three on its way. Too strong for the rebound is Dillon. That'll be Hudson on the rebound. 20 to 15 score remains. Either team scoring on their last possession. Randolph leading six and a half to go first half. There's a really long three, but count it as Dodderwich is on the scoreboard, and it's now 20 to 18. BA within two. Colton Ford with the basketball free throw circle gives to Lorenzen. Lorenzen, a sophomore, big guy at six foot four, drives and a charge. I believe that's a second charge called now on Randolph. Hort uh, is slow to get up. After taking that, he is lying on the ground on he, uh, lying on the floor on his back. So Lorenzen gets called for his first. That's the team's fourth. That'll be eight turnovers charged to Randolph. Porta is held back to his feet. And is he staying in the game? Well, he's two, three, four. They've only got four guys on the floor. One, two, three, four. Okay. So they'll have to check Lanners back in. And then want to clean up the floor a little bit from the player lying on the floor. It might be cold outside, but it's warm inside when these guys are playing. So a little mopping up of the sweat. Smile on the face of Hudson Dillon as he's about to get the ball from the official. Uh, Dan Roots, Henry Hoberman, and Tom Candell are the officials in today's game. Zone defense being set up by Randolph. They lead by two, six minutes to go first half, 20 to 18 over the Cardinals. Get the basketball with Lanners. Now he gives to Dodderwich. Dodderwich looking for a drive. There's nothing to drive. Goes to Dillon. All the way across to Porter. Porter centers the ball to Hayden. Dillon hands it to Hudson. Hudson on the right wing. Guarded closely. Guarded closely by Barker, I believe. And then he goes in the lane. Forces it up and in. And Hudson Dillon has two more. And we now have a 20-20 tie. I believe uh, we were tied at 10 for a short time. And now we're tied here at 20. There were a number of lead changes as well already in the first half of this first half, or the middle part of the first half. Five and a half to go in the first half, all even at 20-20. The three is up. That's Oren Alexander who checked into the game for Randolph, and he hits his first shot. A three for a three-point lead for the Rockets, 23-25, 10 to go. Till halftime. Dylan to Dodderwich. Dodderwich to the top of the lane to Hudson Dillon. That was a bit of an air ball on a three, but it was rebounded by Hayden Dillon. So the possession continues, but the shot clock did not reset. Dodderwich drains his second three of the game, and we're tied again. 23-23, tie 4.45 to go in the first half. Between the legs, Ford on the runner, scoops it up and off. A tap out, grabbed by Dodderwich. So it is uh, Bethlehem Academy, ball in a tie game, 23 apiece. Bumps, shoots, and misses it. Rebound picked up by Ford. Fulton Ford ahead to uh, Kyle Ford, who's in the lane. Passes the ball to Lorenzen. Off glass for two. He has his second field goal. It's back to a Randolph lead, 25-23, 4-10 to go in the first half. Taking his time right over center court is Hudson Dillon, a 6'4 senior guard. Hands the ball off to Hayden, the freshman guard. Top of the key, guarded by Ford. Threads a pass to the high post. Give and go right back to him, but he has nothing to do. Now he lost the handle on the basketball. Picks it up in the right corner, 10 on the shot clock. Hudson with the basketball. Dillon, spin, move, up, off, rebounded by, I think that's Lorenzen with another rebound. And a fast break the other way. A little Euro step through the lane for J.D. Kuhn. And it's 27-23. Randolph, three and a half to go in the first half. Hudson Dillon, just very deliberate across the timeline. Lots of time left. 35 seconds is a lot of time. 
Nice cut on the lane. Reverse layup. Lorenzo, that reverse layup, I should say, by Dodderwich. Dodderwich on that play with the great feed from Hudson Dillon. Then a three misses, and it is out of bounds off the Randolph miss on a three. It would score 27-25 Rockets, 3.08 to play. First half, Kreisel back into the game for the Rockets. So Kreisel, Exley, Ford, Lorenzen, and Adi are on the floor for the Rockets. Stoderwich gets the ball from Hudson, gives it back to Hudson Dillon. And then you've got Friesen. Uh, Orta is back in the game, and Hayden Dillon round out the crew out there for the B.A. Cardinals. Down by two, under three minutes to go in the first half. Dodderwich, here comes a three, it's blocked. The three ball is blocked and the loose ball grabbed by Kreisel. A clean block of a three-point try. Driving in, little teardrop try, good for Colton Ford, and he's having a monster first half. It's 29-25, Rockets. Huerta, top of the key. Puts it on the floor, left-hand dribble. 20 to shoot. 220 in the first half. Hayden Dillon to Horta, and then Horta got slapped on the wrist by Adi. We had a couple of fouls really early in the game. That pace has slowed down quite a bit. Not an overly physical game. Foul is whistled against Colton Adi. It's his second, the team's fifth. Three fouls have been called against Bethlehem Academy. <clears throat> Into the game is Sheldon. Sheldon will come in for Adi, senior for a senior. And 20 put on the shot clock here for Bethlehem Academy. The inbound by Hudson Dillon. Dillon looks, throws it all the way into Dodderwich. He's a six-foot freshman guard. Just had his three-pointer blocked a moment ago, but he, he's hit a couple from way outside there, too. Hudson Dillon, spin, move, baseline. Great work on that by Hudson Dillon. And that pulls this game within 29-27. B.A. down two, two minutes to go in the first half. Ford with a long three halfway down. It bubbles out, rebounded by Hayden Dillon. That was uh, Colton Ford, who's already hit four three-pointers, but missed that one. Now a rainbow two by Huerta. That didn't go for him. Rebounded by Kreisel, who's got five rebounds. And then a line drive three from the right corner for Exley. His first points of the game, 32-27 Rockets with 1.25 to go in the first half. Dodderwich drives inside the arc, lost the ball, and it appears that Randolph has it. No, it's, well, it's a jump ball. It's a jump ball is what the indication is. Great job by Jamison Exley to get in there and force that tie-up. Now, the ball does belong to Bethlehem Academy, but that is still a credit to Exley to get that arrow pointed down in their direction. Barker into the game. Ford, hot hand at all, will take a seat. 12, what, 16 first half points for Colton Ford, including four three pointers. Five point lead for the Rockets, inbound by Bethlehem Academy. Right side, Dodderwich, baseline drive, and he's fouled. Parker will charge, be charged with his second. And two shots coming for Dodderwich. Bethlehem Academy, two for four from the line. Interestingly enough, two for four from the line for Randolph at this point as well as a team. Big deep breath taken by Dodderwich. First free throw, in and out. Ford back into the game. Colton Ford back into the game for Randolph. Porter back into the game for Bethlehem Academy. BA plays Monday with St. Charles at home. Three game week next week to wrap up on the regular season. Randolph goes to Triton next Friday night. Dodderwich hits the second free throw. Each player that's gone to the line has hit one out of two. So it's now 32-28 to 28 Rockets with the basketball. One minute to go in the first half. Kreisel through the lane. Passes corner. I think that's Barker driving baseline. And he must have stepped out of bounds. Been a little while since Randolph has had a turnover, even though they were plagued with them early. Nine to five is the turnover turnover count. H and R Block stats. Nine to five. Uh, Randolph with more turnovers than Bethlehem Academy. Fifty seconds to go in the first half. A four-point lead for the Rockets as Huerta is open free throw line left side of it drills it. Nice looking jumper, 
And it's a two-point game, 32-30 with 40 seconds. Randolph with the ball. Shot clock, of course, on. 35-second shot clock. There's a steal by Horta. And on the fast break, Hudson is a little out of control, but Hudson Dillon writes himself enough to score. We're tied at 32 with 25 seconds to go in the first half and no shot clock now. 32-32, 19 seconds. Hudson Dillon going for the steal, missed it. The ball did get through to Colton Ford. Ford skips it over to Kreisel. Still 11 on the game clock in the first half in a tie ball game. Colton Ford, he's deadly from three-point, fake there. Lorenzen now out to Ford, down to two seconds, one second. The shot is blocked, and then, uh, no sh- I guess he got that second shot away. I think he got the second shot away, so there were a couple of misses in there, but he did end up getting his own rebound. Colton Ford did, and what an exciting first half of basketball. B.A. was up by uh, seven points right away, and it looks like a five-point lead was the biggest that Randolph had. And all that uh, said and done, we end up 32-32 at the end of the first half. 32-32 on the 9920 KDHL, Faribault, Minnesota. We go ahead and take a break. 97.9 FM and free on the KDHL app. Federated Mutual Insurance Company is hiring in Owatonna and Mankato. Federated Insurance offers full training, competitive pay and benefits, plenty of room for growth, and an unmatched company culture. We are seeking talented professionals who are comfortable working with multiple computer systems and who have a strong attention to detail. No insurance experience is required. Join a company that values hard work and continues to thrive and grow. Learn more and apply now at federatedinsurance.com. Faribault Foods has been a pillar of the Faribault community since 1895. As a leading manufacturer of high-quality canned foods, they're dedicated to providing wholesome and delicious recipe-ready food. Keep your pantry stocked with canned beans and vegetables for easy meals at your fingertips. Use Mrs. Grimes' beans in your favorite soups, chilies, or tacos. And butter kernel vegetables as a side dish your family will love. For more meal inspiration, visit MrsGrimesBeans.com or ButterKernel.com. H&R Block offices in Oatana, Faribault, and Lakeville remind you now is the time to get your paperwork in order for tax season. Book your appointment at one of the offices where in-person or drop-off filing is available. No computer program can ask every single possible tax question. The tax professionals in Lakeville, Faribault, and Oatana average 10 years experience, and you can request the same preparer every year. File your way at H&R Block offices in Faribault, Oatana, and Lakeville. All tax situations are different. Not everyone gets a refund. Since the turn of the century, Federated Mutual Insurance Company and many of our employees have called Owatonna home. We work hand-in-hand with our neighbors through giving, volunteering, and focusing on community initiatives. We invest in this community because we love to see opportunities and advancements, such as the new high school and the downtown developments. We enjoy seeing the citizens of our great community continue to grow and thrive. And above all, we are proud to be part of Owatonna's rich history and all that Owatonna has to offer. From the launch pad in Randolph, what a ball game we have here. 32-32 at the break. Going through some of the statistics at this point, a courtesy of H&R Block, Faribault, Lakeville, and Owatonna. They know their numbers at H&R Block. So 32-32, there's been three lead changes and three ties. Bethlehem Academy jumped out to a 10-3 lead, but before long, Randolph was up 13-10. Game was tied at 10, game was tied at 20. Actually, was also tied at 23, so I think we've got four ties because we're tied here at the half at 32, and then three lead changes that came in there as well. I've got Bethlehem Academy shooting 13 for 31, three for seven from three-point range, while Randolph is 12 for 27 overall and six for 14 from three-point range. Free throws, three for six for Bethlehem Academy as a team. And for Randolph, two for four. Rebounding, 17-11 in favor of Randolph. All these numbers unofficial, but give you some ballpark ideas of what's going on tonight. 17-11 advantage for Randolph. And then the turnovers, 10 by Randolph, five for by, uh, by Bethlehem Academy. 
taking the scoring simply from top to bottom on each uh, side of the ledger. Eight points for Huerta. Actually, make that nine points. Nine points. He had the first basket of the game. He also has a free throw in there. Nine points for Huerta. Seven, ten, fourteen points for Hudson Dillon in the first half. Couple of rebounds to go with that. He's had some real nice assists as well. 14. And then the only other scorer for Bethlehem Academy is Dotterwich, and he has nine, which includes two three-pointers and then a field goal and one for two from the line. For Randolph, a lot more scorers. Alexander with three. Peyton Barker, one for two from the free-throw line. Three, six, nine, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 first-half points for Colton Ford. One for Kreisel, four for Kuhn, three for Exley on a three. And Lorenzen has four points. So that's three, four, five, six. Looks like seven players have scored for Randolph and just three players have scored for Bethlehem Academy. But the team score is the same. It is 32-32 here at the break. Junior varsity game went to Randolph 51-37. to And after B.A. got off to a quick start in this one, we are all tied at the half at 32-32. We'll take a look at how the section standings are shaping up in 1A and 1AA when we continue from the launch pad. Rockets and Cardinals, 32 apiece at the half on the Mighty 920 KDHL. Every part counts at Amesbury Truth. And the most important one is the part you'll play when you join their team. As the leading provider of window and door products in North America, Amesbury Truth has a part for you. Right now, they're hiring. And those positions come with competitive wages, benefits, and plenty of opportunities, too. So you never stop growing. Isn't it time you open the door to a career at Amesbury Truth? Get details and apply online at amesburytruth.com slash careers. We are all familiar with these kinds of banks. The ever-popular snow bank that either your neighbor has backed into or their neighbor kids sliding on with their friends. Then there's the blood bank, which, by the way, always a good idea to give blood. But are you familiar with First United Bank with locations in Faribault and Owatonna? At First United Bank, banking is all about relationships and working towards a common goal of financial security. Get to know the most popular bank in the area, First United Bank, member FDIC. Faribault Foods has been a pillar of the Faribault community since 1895. As a leading manufacturer of high-quality canned foods, they're dedicated to providing wholesome and delicious recipe-ready food. Keep your pantry stocked with canned beans and vegetables for easy meals at your fingertips. Use Mrs. Grimes' beans in your favorite soups, chilies, or tacos. And butter kernel vegetables as a side dish your family will love. For more meal inspiration, visit MrsGrimesBeans.com or ButterKernel.com. We are not too far away from section playoff time. One game remains for Randolph. Three games remain after tonight for Bethlehem Academy. And then for B.A., it is off into the 1A playoffs where Blooming Prairie as the uh, inside track for the number one seed. They beat Spring Grove just recently, and they are 21-2 and on the season. Their losses have come to double-A teams, Winona Cotter and Kenyon Wanamingo. So unless something uh, uh, really crashes for BP, they will be looking at the number one seed in 1A. What's interesting for Blooming Prairie um, is that uh, in 2020, B- Blooming Prairie won the section championship for the first time since the 1950s. Well, there was no state tournament. So, very unfortunate situation with the timing on that. But BP, do they have a big playoff run in them again? Time will tell here in the next few weeks. Rushford Peterson is sitting in that number three spot right now in the QRF standings. Followed by Southland, Fillmore Central, Kenyon Wanamingo. Oops, my bad when I said Kenyon Wanamingo was a double-A team. They're a single-A team, and they're one of the teams that did beat Blooming Prairie. Uh, Goodhue, Wabashaw Kellogg, Mabel Canton, Schaefer Academy, Houston, Lyle Pacelli. I rattled through all those teams quickly because they've all got very similar records between about 11 and 14 wins. Uh, that's how the QRF has them in that order, but coaches uh, down the road will take care of uh, figuring that out. And then record-wise, it does drop down a little bit after that Lyle Pacelli club at 11 and 12. You've got Leroy Ostrander, Bethlehem Academy, who's 14th right now in the QRF. Then Lanesboro, Glenville Emmons, Hayfield, MSAD, Rochester Stem, and Grand Meadow. The official has brought players together and the coaches for each team. 
Hmm. Interesting uh, what that might be about. It does not seem to be a super physical game or anything like that where he needed to warn anybody. But one of the officials just took the coaches and a couple of players aside to share a message with them. Everyone seemed to be on board with uh, whatever was being talked about. For Randolph, who is in 1A up until this season, they're in 1AA now, they'll have to deal with the likes of Lake City and Cannon Falls and Caledonia and La Crescent. All those teams have 18 or 19 wins. Lake City and Cannon Falls are playing tonight. Lewis Den Altura, 15 wins. Zimbroto Mazeppa has uh, 14. Winona Cotter, 15. And then it drops down a little bit. Pine Island, St. Charles, Rochester Lord, Dover Yoda, Triton, who uh, Randolph will play next week on the road. Randolph is sitting number 13 in the section, according to the QRF. I had a plain view, Elgin, Millville, Albert Lee, and Chatfield. Yes, Albert Lee is a double-A team, and they play in a conference with quite a few 4A schools. And that whole difference in class is something that I spoke with Coach Quaid about before the game today, was that Randolph this season is in double-A. He said that a couple of Class A teams on the schedule for this season did drop out of their schedule, non-conference teams, so they were a- able to add a couple of double-A teams. And, of course, moving forward, they want to get a schedule that has a lot of double-A teams on it so that they get the uh, uh, right uh, credit in the QRF, even though I'm sure it's a coach's vote ultimately down the road. But when you're in a double-A section, you want to play double-A teams as much as you can besides the ones that are in the Gopher Conference. We're underway with the second half of play, 32-32. 18 minutes up on the clock. Randolph with the basketball and a drive by Kreisel. Ball knocked away from him, and they lose it out of bounds. So I see Adi as well as Kreisel, Lorenzen, Exley, and Ford on the floor for Randolph. Dotterwich gives the ball back to Hudson Dillon. You've got Hayden Dillon, Porter, and Huerta. Starting five are out there. A long three. Dotterwich, my goodness, his third three of the game. And that comes from a long way away. And it is a 35-32 lead for Bethlehem Academy in the opening minute of the second half. They find that ball inside to Colton Adi. And Adi scores. Now it is 35 to 34. BA by one. Some backcourt pressure by Randolph. Bethlehem Academy gets through it. Gives the ball to Hudson Dillon. Dillon on the dribble, top of the key. Moves a little to his right, crosses over, free throw circle. Swings it to Porter. Porter, little pocket pass behind him for a three. And Dotterwich is really heating up. He's got his fourth three of the game. It is 38. 34 BA 16:45 to go. A three-point try to answer misses. Rebound by Dylan on the three-point miss by Ike Kreisel took the shot. Now Hudson Dylan at the other end draws a foul and he'll go to the line. Hayden Dylan got the rebound on that miss a moment ago, by the way. So the foul on Lorenzen will be the second on him, first on the team. At the line is Hudson Dillon, 14 points in the first half. And his first free throw misses. He's the one that shoots. It's an absolute line drive of a free throw. In fact, the ball is barely high enough to clear the front rim. That one had a little more to it. Bubbled around and goes through. 39-34, five-point lead. Biggest lead for B.A., I believe, was seven when they were up 10-3 early. Right now up five, 39-34. Just a minute and a half into the second half. Working around the perimeter is Randolph. Forward passes to Kreisel. Kreisel swings it deeper on the right side. Adi. Adi puts it on the floor. Passes to a baseline move. Then Lorenzen out of the left corner. Ten to shoot. Lorenzen leans, shoots, missed it. Rebound, Horta. Hudson Dillon behind the back dribble. Right wing side gets inside the arc. Goes off the glass. Missed it. Fights for the rebound. Had it. Back up and through. And through the foul. So Hudson Dillon fighting extremely hard for that one. Ends up getting the rebound on the miss. Put it back up and through. Now gets a chance at the three-point play. Hunter Friesel called on the foul. His first team's second. And Dillon, who is two for four at the line, Tries to complete the three-point play. 
got it with that no arc free throw. 42 to 30 to uh 42 to 34. BA off to a big start in the second half, up by eight. This matches or this is their biggest lead of the game at 42 34. Runner to the lane, left hand up and in. First field goal for Kreisel. Couldn't come at a better time for Randolph. 42-36. Rockets put on some backcourt pressure as Dillon tosses the ball over to Dotterwich. Gets it into the front court to Hayden Dillon on the left side outside the arc. Guarded by Exley. Now battle for the basketball. B.A. keeps it. There's Dotterwich for three. That one comes off the heel of the rim. It is tipped and then tipped again. Blue, yes. That one was last touch by Hudson Dillon going for that ball. The three-pointer from Dotterwich missed. He's hit four threes in this game. But that one didn't go. 42-36, Bethlehem Academy. 15.05 to go second half. On the floor, Adi on a dribble. Hands to Lorenzen, top of the lane. Now he gives to Kreisel up the lane, gets tangled up, draws a foul, and Kreisel to go to the line for two. And 22, Donnerwich. His first, team's first of the second half. And at the line, Kreisel, one for two from the free throw line tonight. Free throw around and out. It went part way down, but kicked out. Second free throw coming. Six point lead for Bethlehem Academy. Looking for a season split. Second free throw is good. Makes the score 42 to 37. 42 37. Over to Dodderwich. A pump fake from three. Hands the ball back to Hudson Dillon. Dillon, a couple of dribbles, drives in, floater, missed it, rebound, was by Lorenzen. Ford gets bumped hard by Dillon, he can take that three from anywhere as well, now Kreisel with the ball goes back two, and there is a really long three, but missed it, Horta, skies for the rebound off the missed three. Colton Ford, he can hit him from there as well, that was an awfully long shot. 42-37, 42-37, five-point lead, 14-15 to go in the ballgame. Six-point win, first time through for Randolph. Last season, goodness gracious, Dotterwich midway between the top of the key and the center circle. That is incredible. 45-37. Now a three-pointer, a good foot or so outside the arc, missed, rebounded by Dillon. That'll be Hayden Dillon on that rebound. The lead is 45-37, so an eight-point lead. This matches the eight-point lead they had just a minute or two ago. Bethlehem Academy with the ball and the advantage. Dotterwich got to guard him everywhere, apparently. As Dillon gets the ball to Porter. Porter gets hemmed in on the baseline to Horta. Horta trying to find range for his shot. Six to shoot. Ball knocked away from Dillon. That's a turnover. First of the half on B.A. Fast break the other way. Axley leaves it for Ford. Defender flies by. He eyes his shot. Missed it. And the rebound falls to Dotterwich off the missed three. In the half, 0 for 4 from three-point range for Randolph. H&R Block stats of the game. They know their numbers. H&R Block, Owatonna, Faribault, Lakeville. 45-37, 13 minutes to go. Ball handed over to Dillon from Dillon. Hudson from Hayden. Hudson on the dribble. Dotterwich comes by him. Now he passes it out to Dotterwich. Way outside the arc, but you just never know when he's going to shoot. Backside Porter. Defender flies. Baseline jumper short. Rebounded. Axley. Randolph ball. They need points. All the way across court. And Lorenzen for three. That kicks off the heel of the rim. Rebounded by Dillon. Now 0 for 5 on three-pointers. Very high on the dribble, but not being defended as Dillon as he takes it into the front court. Hayden Dillon puts a screen for him, then he gets, he gets the ball. Hayden to Hudson. Oop! Tossed it right through his legs. And Hudson says, you can't pass it to my ankles. So a turnover on Bethlehem Academy. Their lead is at 8 with 12-13 remaining in the second half. The Mighty 920 KDHL Faribault, Minnesota with Friday Night Hoops. From the launch pad in Randolph. Senior night for the Rockets here. 
Lorenzen gives the ball back to Ford. He skips it to J.D. Kuhn. And a three is good for Barker. His first field goal of the game. Now it is 45-40 with under 12 to play. Hudson Dillon hands to Dodderwich. Couple of dribbles to Hayden Dillon. Back to Dodderwich. Now to Hudson. Left side. Hudson drives inside the arc. Trying to get close to the basket. Off glass. Missed it. Own rebound. Up off. Missed it. Got his own rebound again. Spin around on the baseline. Up off. Another rebound. Good. And he got fouled. My goodness. That would be one, two, three misses and three offensive rebounds for Dillon. Hudson Dillon, who finally converts and is going to attempt the and one, 47-40. The foul is on Lorenzen, his third, the team's third of the second half. That free throw attempt misses, rebounded by Kriesel as Huerta almost knocked him over. 47-40, a three by Ford misses, and Hudson Dillon grabs his eighth rebound. And now 0 for 6 for Randolph on threes in the second half. 3 for 4 on the other hand as this three-point try misses, but the rebound is taken by Dillon, Hayden Dillon. So they've missed a couple of three-pointers, but Dodderwich has also hit three threes here in the second half. 11 minutes to go, a seven-point lead for Bethlehem Academy. Dodderwich is open. Goes off the heel of the rim, an offensive rebound, and then I don't think that ever was a rebound for him. We're going to call a rebound over here. A missed three-point try, and 47-40, a floater in the lane, goes through for Colton Ford. So Ford, who had 16 points in the first half, has his first field goal of the second half. 47-42, ten and a half minutes remain. B.A. by five. Horta, top of the key. Once on the floor and then gives it back to Hudson Diller. Hudson drives, floats in the lane, up and off, a tap out. Hayden Dillon on the rebound. Shot misses, and that rebound was Kriesel. I've got him with seven rebounds. Kriesel drives up the lane, left hand, little off on his shot. So missed that, and the rebound is corralled by Hayden Dillon. Hayden and Hudson Dillon are in a race to see who gets to double-digit rebounds first. And in fact, Hayden will end up with a double doubled in the game. It would seem we've got a timeout on the floor taken by Bethlehem Academy with just under 10 minutes to play in the second half. Bethlehem Academy leads at 47-42. We've got a timeout on the floor on the Mighty 920 KDHL. Every part counts at Amesbury Truth. And the most important one is the part you'll play when you join their team. As the leading provider of window and door products in North America, Amesbury Truth has a part for you. Right now, they're hiring. And those positions come with competitive wages, benefits, and plenty of opportunities, too. So you never stop growing. Isn't it time you open the door to a career? at Amesbury Truth. Get details and apply online at amesburytruth.com slash careers. H&R Block offices in Oatana, Faribault, and Lakeville remind you now is the time to get your paperwork in order for tax season. Book your appointment at one of the offices where in-person or drop-off filing is available. No computer program can ask every single possible tax question. The tax professionals in Lakeville, Faribault, and Oatana average 10 years experience, and you can request the same preparer every year. File your way at H&R Block offices in Faribault, Oatana, and Lakeville. All tax situations are different. Not everyone gets a refund. So a timeout taken by Bethlehem Academy. That leaves them four. Still five timeouts remain for Randolph. Fairly tight game, 47-42. B.A. with the lead and the ball. Hudson Dillon with the basketball. Does he have uh, 14, 18, 19 points in the game so far for Hudson Dillon. All the way across to Dodderwich in the uh, right wing. Couldn't really get up a shot. Ball jabbed free, but he went back and tracked it down. And then uh, worked at the free throw line. In, out, back, Board and through. So Aaron Horta with his first basket of the second half, 49-42 BA, nine and a half remains. Locked shot, but two fouls are coming on this. And Hudson Dillon will get called for his wait, who's got who's called on the foul? Oh, the foul was on Friesen, actually, not Dillon. I thought the block on the ball looked good, but it was a foul otherwise that sends Ford to the line for two. First shot, it's good for Colton Ford. It's his first trip to the free throw line. 
So now 49-43. One more coming. Free throw good. He's up to 20 points in the game. 49-44. Under nine and a half to go. Hudson dribbles into the front court. Actually, Dylan uh, Hudson is the only Dylan on the floor right now. Dotterwich with the basketball. Uh, Lanners is on the floor. Hort is on the floor. Dotterwich open straight on three. How about that? Six three-pointers in the game. 52 to 44. And he was well beyond the top of the arc. Several feet. A couple, three feet beyond the top of the arc. And then Horta on a block of a shot. Gets the loose ball and takes it into the front court. He denied Colton Ford on a shot. Hort at six foot four has some good length to him. And I think a moving screen might have been called there. Moving screen on Horta. His second, team's third. That'll be a Bethlehem Academy turnover. And in an eight-point game, the ball belongs to Randall. 52-44, 8.41 to go in the second half. Nice crowd here at uh, the launching pad. They've got, what, about six sets of bleachers on each side of the gym floor. I'm sitting on the side with the score table and the player benches. Gym pretty packed on this senior night. Some folks stand just outside the uh, end of the court to watch. That three-point try misses and getting the rebound. Hudson Dillon dribbles into the front court. Team up by eight. Finds Lanners back door. And Zach Lanners gets his first field goal on a great feed from Hudson Dillon. And the lead is as big as it has been all night for Bethlehem Academy as they lead by 10. 54-44, 8-14 to go in the second half with more basketball after this message on the Mighty 920 KDHL. Federated Mutual Insurance Company is passionate about the care and enrichment of the next generation. At the heart of our charitable focus is youth mentoring and our support of Big Brothers Big Sisters. We are proud of our employees who are currently volunteering to be a big brother, big sister, big couple, or big family. And yet there are hundreds of children still waiting for a big. Ignite your year. Empower potential today. Consider this your personal invitation to learn more about Big Brothers Big Sisters. Together, we can make a difference. So a timeout taken by Randolph. That leaves each team with four timeouts for the balance of the second half. This game was tied at 32-32 at the half. Right away, a three-pointer coming out of the gate by Dotterwich, and then an answer of a two by Randolph. But then a 7-0 run for Bethlehem Academy. Randolph got within five. Teams traded a couple of baskets. And now um, Bethlehem Academy has hit a couple of shots, a three and a two, to go up by 10. So we were back and forth for a little while with a five-point difference. Now we're at a 10-point difference, 8.14 to go. Rocket basketball. And they will just roll it up the floor, kind of conserve as much time as they can for a 10-point comeback with eight minutes to go. In the corner, this is Barker through the defense, missed it, got his own rebound. And Barker flings it out. They go over to the left corner. Good ball movement here by Randolph. Still 12 to shoot. To the right, open for a three. It rims out. Huerta grabs the rebound on the missed three from the right side by Alexander. Alexander, no, it wasn't Alexander. It was Ford, uh, Kyle Ford, that was shooting that three, I believe, that missed it. There's an opening for Hudson Dillon. Just a little bit of an opening, and he bursts up the lane. So does something happen there on the defense? He saw the opening, and then he just attacked. And it's 56-44, so now a 12-point lead with 7.5 to go for Bethlehem Academy. Inside to the big man, uh, Krieger. And Krieger, first points for him. He's got some size inside. It also breaks a 7-0 run, 56-46, so we're back at 10. 10 10-point lead for B.A. Hudson Dillon. Finds the opening again, runs, shoots, misses it. Rebound by Krieger off the miss. 
to the other end was uh, Ford. Goes to Krieger, back to Ford, gets through the defense and banks that in. Nice job by Kyle Ford, the sophomore. His first field goal, and it's 56-48 with 6.45 to go. Hudson Dillon just takes his time. I've got him for nine rebounds in addition to uh, 22 points. Hayden Dillon on the dribble. Hayden's got eight rebounds in my book. Rebounding was uh, not good to start for B.A., but they have done much better since a slow start. Shot clock is down to six. Hudson Dillon bangs, spins, shoots, scores. Back to 10-point lead, 58-48, 6-10 to go. Randolph Ford leaves the ball for Kreisel. Now Barker lines up a three and knocks it down. Peyton Barker with his second three of the half, 58-51. 5.50 to go. Just so methodical. Hudson Dillon, each time the senior takes the ball forward, he's just out for a walk. He's out for a walk in the weather like it was three days ago, not like the weather like it is today. And that's a nice baseline drive by Willie Porter. Waits for the defender to fly by him or kind of shake off of him. And Porter has his first basket. It's 60 to 51 BA, five and a half to go. Ford gives that one to Ford. And Kyle Ford hits a three. It's 60 to 54. 5.15 to go. And there's Hudson going for his walk. He's not walking the dog. He's walking the ball. Still all sorts of time, 20 on the shot clock. And wow, a screen knocked down a player. And then Huerta missed the shot, the rebound. And I think that it is a foul whistled against Randolph as the rebound was collected by Dotterwich. And the foul on Sheldon, his first, team's fourth. 20 is put on the shot clock for uh, Bethlehem Academy. And the Cardinals will inbound in the right corner. And a little little conversation between a couple of players and the official. Everyone is mostly smiling over that. As Horta and Ford are getting pretty physical for the uh, uh, jockeying for position on the inbound. B.A. basketball coming out of the right corner is, uh, well, Hudson Dillon. Dillon, crossover dribble, spin move, kicks it outside to Hayden. Hayden back to Hudson. Eight on the clock. Oh, backdoor pass at the low post, but Porter fumbled the ball. And a foul in battling for the basketball. Great court vision by Hudson Dillon to find Porter over there. So it's a foul on Colton Ford, his second, and that's the team's fifth. 20 seconds put back on the shot clock, 4.45 to go. A lot of time is coming off on this possession because that's the second clock reset in the front court for B.A. Uh, Dillon shoots, scores, and got fouled. Hudson Dillon, another chance at a three-point play. It's the third time he's had an and one. He's one for two so far in the and one department. The foul is on Colton Adi, his third, team sixth, 62-54, Bethlehem Academy with a free throw pending for Hudson Dillon. He is two for four from the line. In and out. He's got a little more arc on that shot. Far be it for me to question what he's doing because he's having a fantastic night, but those line drive free throws aren't always going for him. Offensive rebound at the other end is up and through for Adi. He has his second field goal. And it is uh, 62, 56, 420 to go. Dillon walks into the front court. On the right wing side, Dillon to Dillon, back to Dillon. Hudson on the dribble. He's got Hayden to his left. He goes right side. Dotterwich drives in, pulls up right of the, just right of the lane. Dotterwich, who's drilled all sorts of threes, takes this one inside. It's 64-56 with under four minutes to go. B.A. leads by eight. Driver up the lane, runner up the lane, drawing the foul on it is Peyton Barker. He is not afraid to take that up the lane and take it up the lane hard. Huerta called on the foul. Peyton Barker plays football and uh, looks like he's not afraid to make contact most of these seniors on this senior night where 
they list some of their other activities here at the school. Most of them play football as well. And not afraid to get physical, and both coaches felt that that would be kind of the story tonight. It hasn't been an overly physical game, but the players are not afraid to take it up the lane. 64-57, the first free throw is made by Peyton Barker. Eight points for him in the game. Second free throw, effort, is good. So it's 64-58. 64-58, a six-point lead now for Bethlehem Academy, 3.40 to go in the second half. Hudson Dillon stands on the R for Randolph. Gives to, oh, fake the handoff to Dotterwich. Still 16 to shoot. Uses up the dribble. Goes to Hayden. That ball is stripped away from Hayden. And last touch by Hayden. So that'll be a turnover on Bethlehem Academy. Randolph has hardly turned over the ball in this second half. B.A. with about four giveaways. Yet Bethlehem Academy does lead 64 to 58. Partially because it's taken Randolph a little while to get going on the three-point ball. They were, I think, 0 for their first six in the second half. They've hit a few threes now, and here's Ford with a three-point try. That one's good. Another three for number three, Colton Ford, and all of a sudden, this is a 64-61 to game. It is a 5-0 run for Randolph. It sets up in a zone defense as they get into the front court. Let's take that back. Man defense. A daughter, which three is too strong and flying in the air. Barker gets a nice rebound. Three-point game. Randolph down. Randolph with the ball. 240 remaining. The ball was tipped into the backcourt. Colton Ford goes to get it. Ford passes to Barker. Barker, top of the lane. Heaves it up in traffic. Follow-up by Lorenzen on a putback basket. This is now a... 7-0 run, and it's 64-63 with 2.20 to go. Randolph has pulled within one. B.A. with the ball. And the one-point lead with 2.10 to go in the contest, or at least in regulation. Dotterwich centers that to Porter. Porter gives to Hudson. Because Hayden is also on the floor. Hudson drives in, gets uh, kind of trapped along the baseline, flings it out to Dotterwich who takes the shot from the free throw line. Oh, he's too close to the basket. I'm kind of kidding, of course. As uh, Lorenzen got the rebound off the miss, and then there's contact afterward. Foul on Bethlehem Academy's Willie Porter. That'll be his first, the team's fifth. Actually, the sixth, isn't it? Now scoreboard shows five. We'll go with that. Fifth foul on Bethlehem Academy. One-point lead for B.A. Randolph with the ball, minute 45 to go. Randolph attacking the basket to my left. The Rockets in blue. Uh, player fouled as he's dribbling toward the hoop. Not a shooting foul by any means. Hudson Dillon, I think, called on his first. Now it's six on Bethlehem Academy. Six fouls on Randolph as well. One-point game, 140 to go. Inbound Peyton Barker. The senior, he'll find Colton Ford as Hudson goes for the steal, didn't get it. Jump stop in the lane, up and off with white shirts everywhere. It is Hayden Dillon that gets the rebound off the miss by Ford. So, Bethlehem Academy with the lead by one. 125 to go. They cross into the front court, still 25 on the shot clock. And there's a whistle and a foul away from the ball. 10, so the foul on Kyle Ford, his first, team seventh, so it's a one and one for Aaron Horta. Horta one for two on the free throw line tonight. He's got 11 points in the ball game, 64-63, Bethlehem Academy. Free throw, didn't go. And the rebound, well, the guy who got called on the foul, Kyle Ford. And now a foul against Bethlehem Academy. Trying to get that ball away from Ford was Hayden Dillon. Dillon called on the foul his first, but will march to the other end of the floor. And I believe that it's Kyle Ford who will go to the free throw line for a one and one Ford has five points all in the second half. Kyle Ford, a 6'3 sophomore. 64-63. Front end of the one and one It's good. 
Tie ball game, 64 apiece. I think this is the first tie of the second half. 118 to go. Randolph has done really well at the free throw line. I didn't want to complete the sentence before the young man took a shot. This is now a 9-0 run for the Rockets. They go ahead 65-64, 118 to play, a timeout on the floor. We're back in a moment on the Mighty 920 KDHL, 97.9 FM and free on the KDHL app. We are all familiar with these kinds of banks. The ever-popular snow bank that either your neighbor has backed into or their neighbor kids sliding on with their friends. Then there's the blood bank, which, by the way, always a good idea to give blood. But are you familiar with First United Bank with locations in Faribault and Owatonna? At First United Bank, banking is all about relationships and working towards a common goal of financial security. Get to know the most popular bank in the area, First United Bank, member FDIC. What a thriller we have coming down the stretch here at the launch pad and Randolph, a 65-64 lead for the Rockets over the Cardinals. One eighteen to play in the second half. So Dylan, Dylan, Horta, Porter, and Dotterwich, that's actually the starting five out there for B.A. Lorenzen, Barker, Ford, uh, Adi, and Kriesel, which is probably the usual, mainly the usual starters. They went with a different starting lineup tonight on senior night, Randolph did. But that's uh, the five they have out there now. Horta goes along the baseline, finds Porter in the corner. Porter goes outside to Hayden, then to Hudson, Dylan. 15 to shoot, 57 seconds to play second half. Hudson spins, shoots, misses it. There's a whistle and a foul that will send him to the line. So who's the foul on? Two is Peyton Barker on the foul. Two free throws coming for Hudson Dillon. Dillon, one, two, three for six. Three for six from the line, 65-64, Randall. Dillon for the tie. Missed it. 65-64, Randall, 53.2 seconds remaining, second half. One more shot. Try to tie it. This one around... It crawled over the front of the rim and finally found its way through. That ends a 9-0 run for Randolph. We are tied at 65-65 with 45 seconds to go. Timeout is taken by the Rockets. 65-65, 46 seconds remaining in regulation. We'll sneak away for this on the Mighty 920 KDHL, Faribault, Minnesota, 97.9 FM. Every part counts at Amesbury Truth. And the most important one is the part you'll play when you join their team. As the leading provider of window and door products in North America, Amesbury Truth has a part for you. Right now, they're hiring, and those positions come with competitive wages, benefits, and plenty of opportunities, too. So you never stop growing. Isn't it time you open the door to a career at Amesbury Truth? Get details and apply online at amesverytruth.com slash careers. Two timeouts left for the Rockets. Four timeouts left for Bethlehem Academy. Last season, B.A. got the sweep. 54-48 and 52-50. Randolph won the first meeting this season, 68-62. Teams will go their own ways after tonight's game because... B.A. is a 1A team. Randolph is now a 1AA team. Randolph goes to Triton next Friday night. B.A. has a home game with St. Charles on Monday. And then another road game on Tuesday. West Lutheran home game next Friday with Hayfield to close out the regular season. 65-65, 46 seconds. There's still 29 on the shot clock because of when timeout was called by the Rockets. The inbound comes to Colton Ford. Ford dribbles into the front court once or twice between his legs. Comes off a screen right side inside the arc to the baseline. Passes around the perimeter. Barker. Barker up the lane. Twirls it around up and off. Rebounded by the Cardinals. Off the miss. Tie game. No shot clock. Hudson Dillon patiently takes it across the timeline and then just comes to a stop. 20 seconds on the game clock. 65-65. 
Dillon with the basketball, hands it off to Porter. Porter gives it back to Hudson Dillon, 12 on the shot clock. I'm sorry, 12 on the clock, on the game clock. And we have a whistle. And did they take, did, did BA take timeout? What happened here? What happened here? Or there's a foul. There's a foul on the play. A foul called on Barker, his fourth. And to the line for a one and one with 9.1 seconds to go is Hayden Dillon. Hayden has not scored in today's game. This is the front end of a one and one. The shot misses. Rebound Lorenzen. There's seven seconds, six seconds, and a timeout is taken by Randolph. It is a 65-65 game. There's five seconds to go in the second half. It's Randolph basketball, and I think the inbound is going to be in the backcourt. A full timeout is taken. I'm just going to hold it here at this time. So Lorenzen got the rebound on the missed free throw. Ends in about six rebounds to go with his six points tonight. Kreisel, seven rebounds for Randolph is the stat leader there. Colton Ford, what is he at, 23 points in the game? Meanwhile, Hudson Dillon, where are we at for him? 27, I believe, for Hudson Dillon. We'll add it all up in the post-game show. Just a matter of if the post-game show is going to start in five seconds or not, or if we're looking at some bonus basketball this evening from Randolph. The game was tied at 32-32 at the end of the first half. And right now it's 65 apiece with five seconds to go in the second half. What other ties did we have in the second half? I I, I think 65 was our first tie, wasn't it? In the second half? Pretty sure. At 65 apiece, our first tie of the second half, fourth tie of the ball game, fourth or fifth tie of the ball game. So five seconds to go for Randolph, starting in the backcourt. Lorenzen, Kreisel, and Ford, and Barker, and Adi are on the floor for Coach Quaid with five seconds to go in a tie game. Pass comes to Ford. Ford dribbles into the front court. Three seconds, two seconds. He passes it. Adi does not take a shot. He passed the ball. We're going to overtime. Bonus basketball tonight here from Randolph. Tied at 65 apiece at the end of regulation. So just to go through some of the stat notes here, and I tell you what, I will take a quick break, and we'll be back for overtime in a moment. 65 apiece in Gopher Conference basketball. Federated Mutual Insurance Company is hiring in Owatonna and Mankato. Federated Insurance offers full training, competitive pay and benefits, plenty of room for growth, and an unmatched company culture. We are seeking talented professionals who are comfortable working with multiple computer systems and who have a strong attention to detail. No insurance experience is required. Join a company that values hard work and continues to thrive and grow. Learn more and apply now at federatedinsurance.com. Four minutes up on the clock for overtime in just a moment. How about a score, individual scoring update. Worked it with 11. 2, 4, 6, 8, 9, 10, 24, yep, 27. Double checking on Hudson Dillon. Two points for Porter, coming very late in the game. Two points for Lanners off a great feed from Dillon. And then 1, 2, 3, 4, 12, 13, 14, 23 points in the game for Dotterwich. On the other side, 3 for Alexander. 3, 6, 9 for Barker. 23 for Ford. 4 for Kreisel. 4 for Kuhn. 7 for Ford, Kyle Ford. 3 for Exley. Six for Lorenzen, four for Adi, two for Krieger. It all adds up to 65-65 or better because that's what the scoreboard shows. And uh, B.A. will be going uh, left to right. And Randolph from right to left. Randolph controls the uh, ball off of the opening tap. Of course, gone is the day where you just hold the ball forever at overtime and shoot at the end. The lead on Adi's basket. And it is 67-65 Randolph. Just underway with overtime. Four minutes, we're up on the clock. We're at 3.30 now. Dotterwich 
Lorenzen, long and uh, tall, <laughs> standing near him because Dodderwich will shoot from everywhere, including the neighboring community of Northfield. Hayden, Dillon in the corner, dribbles out of the corner. Tries to find his way inside, goes out to Porter. Eight on the shot clock. Now uh, Hudson Dillon holds it in his hand. Left hand dribble. Takes the shot. It's off. He fights for the rebound. Who's got it? And I think it's going to be, he was touched by a Randolph player. Maybe he was touching it as the ball was out of bounds. So the ball belongs to, the ball belongs to Bethlehem Academy. But what was the time on the shot clock? Because they've got 20 on there right now. I don't know that there would have been a change of possession and then a turnover. Do they like 20? Are they comfortable with that? I think they're going to leave it. They're, they gave it. They gave a thumbs up to the score table. So 20 on the shot clock. Bethlehem Academy ball down by two. We're in overtime. Three minutes to go. Dodderwich, goodness. That one, uh, oh, that went off the support. Scraps up above the hoop. So Dodderwich that time from a long, long way away. But it kicked way high in the air. And the ball belongs to Randolph. Randolph has rallied from uh, an early seven-point deficit, and they were down by 10 or even 11 points in the second half. Ford comes out of the left wing, gives the ball to Barker. Barker straight on three short. Rebound. Adi. Adi kicks it out around to Ford. Ford in, waits for Huerta to come down, missed the shot, and Hayden Dillon gets the rebound. 67-65, 67-65, Randolph, B.A. basketball, two and a half in overtime. Shot missed. Shot missed by Dillon, rebounded by Kriesel, his eighth rebound. Racing the other way is Kriesel, gives to the corner, Lorenzen. Lorenzen charge. It's the third charge of the ball game on the Rockets and probably the second one called on Lorenzen. It's also his fourth foul of the game and the ball on a rare turnover in this second half charge to Randolph, and it is uh, B.A. basketball down to 217 in overtime. I think they might have just issued a warning. Issued a warning to the Randolph bench, I do believe, is what just happened there. B.A. ball down by two, clock going 210, and taking his time walking across center court is Hudson Dillon. Passes to Hayden. Hayden to Horta. Now over to Dodderwich. He's guarded by Lorenzen. Now Hudson has it, 15 to shoot. Way, way open is Porter. Can't miss that shot. You can't miss taking that shot as open as Willie Porter was. And he hit it. It's a three for Porter. 68-67. Bethlehem Academy, 145 to go. Nice pass to Adi. It's good. And he's fouled. Adi converts. He's got the second shot of the overtime, and Adi will go to the line. The foul is on Huerta, I believe, and that is his fourth. 69-68, Randolph, and one coming up here for Adi, who has eight points, has not shot a free throw in the game, and missed it. Rebound by Hudson Adi. And Lorenzen is fouled out of the game. Lorenzen was going for the ball, and he is just fouled out of the game. Lorenzen, six points in the contest. He fouls out with 1.40 to go in overtime. There are free throws coming at the other end, by the way, for Hudson Dillon. And this is a double bonus, so he has two free throws coming. Misses it. One, two, three, four, five, six. He's four for ten from the free throw line. Second free throw pending for the tie. Free throw on its way off the front of the rim. Rebound. Friesel tears it down. That's nine rebounds. So it's still 69-68. Rockets. And they take a timeout. Time out on the floor. A lot of exciting things going on for the postseason with uh, 
section wrestling. Big day coming up tomorrow at the Mayo Civic Center in Rochester. We're in 1-3A. Albert Lee and Northfield will meet for the title in 1A. Chatfield and Goodhue in the semifinal. Dover Yoda and uh, Kenyon Wanamingo in the semifinal. 1-AA. ZM versus Pine Island and Stewartville versus Cass and Manorville for those big semifinal matchups. Meanwhile, over at Lake Crystal Welcome Memorial tomorrow, it's LCWM against Medford in a semifinal in 2A. Waterville Janesville faces Westfield in the other semifinal. Some of the wrestling things going on. What's that? Oh, no, I'm sorry. No, the, too much to do to give other scores, but I appreciate that. <laughs> Thought I had some scores to pass along and. Just too much happening. 1.30 to go in the overtime. 69-68, Randolph with the ball. Randolph with the ball and the lead. And there's Barker, finds it open. He goes and scores and hits the deck as he does. Peyton Barker with a big basket. It's 71-68, Rockets at the other end. A charge against Hudson Dillon. And the momentum has fully swung in Randolph's favor. It already had with the big rally from behind. Well, when it comes to scores, as we go into a timeout, let's see if my app gives me anything here. We've got a timeout. Going to hold it here, but if I can find my scoreboard app, where'd that thing go? Sometimes there's some basketball updates on there. 71-68, Randolph with the lead in overtime. Basketball, boys basketball, and let's find, oops, scores. Look at double A. Double A basketball. Some games are already final tonight. Zambroto, Mazeppa, Edge, Cass, and Manorville. Hey, was there a certain score you're looking for? <laughs> now we got uh, Lewiston, Altura beat Wabashaw Kellogg 72 to 53. Big game in double A was Lake City. Cannon Falls, right? I don't know if I have a score on that one. Wait. Cannon Falls beat Lake City 69-61. Yeah, we'll see about more scores later. Right now, we've got this score to deal with. A lot of backcourt pressure, and another timeout is taken by Randolph. Randolph, that'll be their final timeout. So 71-68, Randolph, 114 to play. And... So double-A basketball scores tonight. ZM over Cass and Manorville, 49-46. I do have, was there a certain score you were looking for? Oh, Cannon Falls Lake City. And I do have that score. Um, I just want to double-check it before I say it again. Cannon Falls beat Lake City, 69-61. Yeah, 69-61, Cannon Falls over Lake City tonight. And that is, that's showing up uh, final on this scoreboard feed. Uh, JWP big over Waterville, Elysian Morristown. Not a surprise. 81-52, a minute to go in that game. Um, I'm not seeing any other Gopher games pop up here. Lewiston Altura beat Wabashaw Kellogg. Those are some teams from Section 1, 72 to 53 over that game. And if I click on Class A, can't click on Class A. There we go. Class A basketball. Anything jumping out here? Spring Grove big over Martin County West. Not a surprise there. How's Blooming Prairie doing today? Uh, good Hubie Chafer Academy tonight. So some of those uh, scores might be of interest. Right here at 71-68, Randolph with the lead and the ball. 114 to go in overtime. Randolph is out of timeouts. BA, they're gonna, they, they've got four timeouts left. Still four timeouts, but they're down. And Randolph with the ball with about a minute five to go. Barker, he just hit a huge shot a minute ago. Huge shot. Adi has some big baskets here in overtime. Two of them. One minute to go in overtime. 20 on the shot clock. B.A. Is, is, has, has their players draped on the Randolph players uh, defensively here. Down to 13 on the shot clock. It's only a three-point game. Randolph needs to find a shot. Eight seconds on the shot clock. Seven, six. Five, pass, corner, Ford lets it fly. Oh, it goes off the heel of the rim. The tap out goes out of bounds off of Randolph. It'll be Bethlehem Academy ball down three with 38 seconds remaining. 71-68 Rockets. 
Huerta will inbound to Hudson Dillon. Hudson picks it up. Down to 35 seconds. There is a shot clock in operation. Dotterwich, he keeps backing off to try and free himself, but Barker's not giving him room. Hudson Dillon on the dribble. B.A. down three. Hudson pulls up on the dribble, looks, passes to Hayden Dillon, back to Hudson. Still 17 to shoot, down by three. Hudson, step back, three on its way. Front of the rim, rebounded by Kreisel. And Kreisel gets fouled, I do believe, as uh, Porter commits the foul. And to the other end for two free throws. So Porter on the foul, the missed three by Hudson Dillon. Dotterwich had the ball for a few seconds in that possession, but Barker was playing great defense to stay fairly close to him. 11.6 seconds. This first free throw is huge, and Friesel is now 3 of 5 from the free throw line. And it's 72-68. So now a two-possession lead for Randolph with 11 seconds to go. And the next free throw misses everything. So it'll be an inbound. An inbound play. The free throw missed everything. And uh, Huerta will play it in. But down by four is Bethlehem Academy. They need a quick shot, either a two or a three. There's a three-pointer. It's offline. Rebounded by Kreisel. He'll dribble away from traffic. Dribble across the timeline. And Randolph rallies from behind to win this one. 72 to 68 in overtime. Bethlehem Academy was up by 10 points at 64 to 54. Late stage of the game. A 9-0 run for Randolph. Gave them a 65-64 lead. A free throw in the late goings by Hudson Dillon. Sent the game to overtime at 65-65. And Randolph outscores Bethlehem Academy 7-3 to in overtime and wins the game 72-68. to What a thriller tonight on the Mighty 920 KDHL in Faribault. Your final score, 72-68. to The Rockets over the Cardinals. I'll give you a recap after this. Faribault Foods has been a pillar of the Faribault community since 1895. As a leading manufacturer of high quality canned foods, they're dedicated to providing wholesome and delicious recipe ready food. Keep your pantry stocked with canned beans and vegetables for easy meals at your fingertips. Use Mrs. Grimes beans in your favorite soups, chilies, or tacos. And butter kernel vegetables as a side dish your family will love. For more meal inspiration, visit MrsGrimesBeans.com or ButterKernel.com. H&R Block offices in Oatana, Faribault, and Lakeville remind you now is the time to get your paperwork in order for tax season. Book your appointment at one of the offices where in-person or drop-off filing is available. No computer program can ask every single possible tax question. The tax professionals in Lakeville, Faribault, and Oatana average 10 years experience, and you can request the same preparer every year. File your way at H&R Block offices in Faribault, Oatana, and Lakeville. All tax situations are different. Not everyone gets a refund. Well, a senior night to remember for the Randolph Rockets. They defeat Bethlehem Academy 72-68 to in overtime. Seniors Peyton Barker, Jeffrey Krieger, James Sheldon, and uh, Colton Adi. All four of them were in the starting lineup. Kale Staub is a senior manager for the team. And what an exciting win for Randolph with this victory today. They improved to 9-16 and overall, 6-8 and in the Gopher Conference. Bethlehem Academy drops to 6-17, and 3-11 and in league play. B.A. will host St. Charles on Monday. Randolph goes to Triton next Friday. Um, in that uh, second half, Randolph couldn't hit a three to save their lives early and then started to hit them later. That helped them rally from a 10-point deficit. After also being down by seven points very early in the game, 10-3, to three, they didn't go with their standard starting lineup and, and it just, they just out of sync with the, with the, you know, some special things happening for senior night, of course, but a little deficit early on that they're able to rally back from and took the lead at 13 to 10. So they rallied very quickly from that early deficit, but so great to get the seniors co- uh, contributing to this game. Colton Adi ends up with eight points as one of the seniors. Uh, Krieger hit a big basket when things had kind of become a little stale for Randolph. So he had a real nice basket. Uh, Peyton Barker had a tremendous overtime basket in this game as well. And then uh, the other senior is Sheldon, who also was able to play in the game. Uh, as far as individual scoring, I'll give you that for a wrap-up. 
give you the Bethlehem Academy side first. 11 for Horta. And did we get any more than 27? 20, nope, 27 is where Hudson Dillon ended up. Five points for Porter. Two points in the game for Lanners. And 23 points for Dodderwich. So three players in double figures for Bethlehem Academy, but they come up short. On the other side, three points for Alexander. Three, six, uh, nine, ten. It looks like 11 for Barker. And nine of those, check that, ten of those 11 points came in the second half, plus that driving, penetrating layup in overtime. 11 big points for Barker in the contest. 23 points for Colton Ford, who was lights out from three-point shooting in the first half. Two, four, five points for Kreisel in the game. Nine rebounds for Kreisel. Four points for Kuhn. Seven points for Kyle Ford. Three points for Exley. Six points and six rebounds for Lorenzen. Eight points for Adi. All of that in the second half in overtime. Four in the second half, four in overtime. Great game for Colton Adi. And two points for Krieger to round out the scoring for Randolph. So next week, final week of the regular season. Playoffs will be underway after that. And before long, teams will be punching their ticket to downtown Minneapolis and uh, and the U of M campus for state. Be sure to watch KDHLradio.com for details on upcoming game broadcasts and download the KDHL app is a good way to follow along with high school basketball as we move on through the remainder of the regular season and on to the uh, exciting time of playoff time as well. Once again, the final score is 72-68. to Randolph in overtime, rallying from a late second half deficit to win 72-68 to in overtime tonight here at the launch pad. My thanks to H&R Block, Owatonna, Faribault, Lakeville. They present those stats of the game. H&R Block, they know numbers. Get them set to do your taxes and, and, and just enjoy the season. H&R Block, Owatonna, Lakeville, Faribault. Federated Mutual Insurance, Faribault Foods, Amesbury Truth, and First United Bank. My name's Roy Koenig on the Mighty 920 KDHL, Faribault, Minnesota. It's a win for the Rockets. 72-68 over Bethlehem Academy in overtime. Good night, and have a great weekend.